Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. You recall last week I had three persons representing or associated with the APNU discussing political issues in advance of the resumption of the 10th Parliament after the two months recess. Today I have three persons representing or associated with the Alliance for Change. I will be posing to them almost exactly the same questions I put to the persons last week. My guests are Mr. Michael Carrington, Mr. Leonard Craig, and Mr. Frederick Kassoon. Gentlemen, welcome to Plain Talk. Um, let's talk about the last elections that, that led us into the 10th Parliament, the AFC. And I, I don't expect you to, to praise the AFC. You're free to criticize, condemn, and praise if you so wish. The AFC's role in the last elections. Well, I think the AFC has achieved a small piece of history in two, in two ways, regional and nationally. Uh, regionally, third parties don't last long. Uh, they never do. Um, Bruce Golden formed his own party, never went anywhere. And when he went back into the JLP, he became the prime minister. So third parties don't do good in the region. Secondly, they don't do good in Guyana, with the exception of Digar, a united force. So they have achieved that small piece of history regionally. Nationally, the configuration of politics has changed, and has changed optimistically with the voting patterns at the last election. And that was due to the AFC's inroads into the Indian um, psyche, particularly in Barbies. And it is that appeal to the Indians with some form of, of, of essential rhetoric on the part of the AFC that has led to a minority government. So the AFC has achieved uh, a little uh, piece of history. As to the performance after then, we'll, we'll that's, come another to that that's another matter. Mr. Craig, what do you think about the AFC and his, as an electoral um, entity or force? Um, I would look at it from this point of view that um, the results of the last election prove the value of AFC in terms of the need for national dialogue um, in the sense that the current configuration of parliament forces either of the two um, older or bigger parties to seek the support of the AFC, which will force dialogue, and that is good for our political system. We are not accustomed to solving issues by dialogue. Um, and so with the AFC as that kind of player, um, we would then have a situation where dialogue happens. It is not to our satisfaction at all times, the level of dialogue that happens, but at least it causes politicians on other sides to be, to be talking. And we find AFC there um, having to, in some cases, be the go-between or at least be the bridge between um, arriving at any majority decision. Well, me and Chris, um, the you're actually on the list of the I'm AFC. The, I'm the executive member. And you're on the list for the um, AFC the last elections? Yes, I'm on the list okay. the AFC the last election. Um, for me, um, AFC is a, is a powerhouse. Regardless, people might think that oh, basically you're just a small party. Because of the AFC stale for the 2000 elections, we didn't disappear. After the 2006, we didn't disappear. We were able to create a system which prevent a winner-take-all government. If the AFC was not there, then one of the parties, if two parties run the race, then one will win 51%, the main parliament and the presidency. So having a third party in force is very, very important to Guyana. Because if you don't, then the president who win parliament and win the presidency will do what they feel like with the people's money, Guyana with the people's money. 
So uh, while we may have little problems now and then, when people come in and go, the most important thing the people out there got to know is that AFC got to stay alive, or if they don't stay alive, you will go back to the same what you had before. So um, for me, AFC had done well. If we had but five more seats, it will be really rewarding because I, I might be in Parliament to deal with <laughs> some of these guys, guys there. So I would like to say um, we cannot afford, in Guyana, the Guyanese people can't afford to lose a third party this time. Because if you lose the AFC, it's difficult for any other third party to come forward. As long as they do not change the constitution, you're in worse problem because you will always have a winner take all government. And I fought the last election to prevent a winner take all government. How then, having, okay, the AFC, uh, and I think with the APNU, they've got what we hear is a one seat majority. Um, how ha has the 10th parliament performed as a result of the AFC being in the National Assembly with an additional two seats? Because in 2006, I think they'd got five seats. You get six, but they, they stole one. <laughs> and so they came with, yeah, but officially they had five. Um, in, how, how have they used, how did parliament benefit from the AFC's seven seats? I'm not too sure one can be ecstatic about uh, the performance of the 10th parliament. And you, you have to contextualize it. The AFC may have done well historically in 2011. Expectations are another matter. The 2011 election produced the great expectation. And that is from the length and breadth of this country, people saw that the PPP was defeated, quote unquote. Two years from then, I don't think we can say the PPP looks defeated. The PPP appears defeated. The PPP is in fact fighting and fighting energetically. No, to answer your question, I think the 10th um, the parliament have not met the, the great expectation of November 2011. How you portion the blame and whether it's correct to say APNU and AFC, man, they didn't do well, man, they could have done better. It needs more uh, analytical meat than that. But there have been large areas of disappointment and it has affected both APNU and AFC. Well, let, let, let's talk, um, Mr. Kisun talked about the disappointment. What would you say the high points? of the 10th parliament. And we'll, we'll get back to the disappointments in a while. Um, the high point of the 10th the, the parliament is the recognition, um, having a government that has conceded the recognition at least, probably not in the way they carry out everything, that they do not or cannot by themselves um, formulate all the, the the policies without the involvement of the opposition. Um, in in previous and the the, the anti money laundering bill is a prime example. And um, just that acknowledgement, I think um, it may not seem much, but uh, I, I think that is 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 a, a, a successful um, aspect of the the the, the ten parliament. The 10th Parliament, um, Chris, is very troublesome. Um, to my mind, I always feel that more, thing, more could, could be done in the Parliament, but the PPP are, is very good in creating confusion. The PPP basically find themselves, over the years, basically they could do anything that they feel like. So you find yourself in a situation that you can't walk into Parliament today and just table a bill and it pass you now have to answer questions to the other side. Because if you don't answer the right question, you, you need their votes to pass the bill because you don't have the majority. So they find themselves in trouble. So in the 10th Parliament, they move around in all direction to find ways and loopholes and those type of things to have con full control of Parliament. And when they can't have full control of Parliament, 
they basically create confusion to actually show that parliament cannot function. There are some situations that they will bring up so many things that help the parliamentarians dealing with so many things that they don't. Except, Mr. Carrington, and I think you, you probably overlooked this, the fact is um, the AFC's Raphael Trotman, one of its strong members, yeah. got the, the speakership, it's mm -hmm. like the yeah. chairmanship of the national, so he should have had some significant influence in what went on in the National Assembly, shouldn't he? Yes, he should have the um, significant intent, but what I find, he basically, um, Rafael, is a good guy, but he be, he's very neutral. He tried to take that very middle line ground. Is not the role of a, of a speaker? Yeah, it's the role of a speaker, to take that middle line ground. And he de uh, what he depends on and how the other sides, basically up new alliance to change whatever they table inside the parliament. From my understanding, they have a lot, a lot of things to deal with, a lot, a lot of bills, a lot of things to deal with in Parliament for table. There's a lot of problems in Guyana. But somehow or the other, what we find is arguments and row and quarrel. A lot of people don't like to look at what takes place in Parliament. A lot of row and quarreling about different things that take up a lot of time. The last two years, they didn't did, did much. Parliament, to me, didn't did much. Well, is that correct? Let's, let's start, and, and in fact, the in immediately in 2012, you moved one of the, f the first things that Parliament had to get its grapple with, get it, its seat in, was the budget. What role did the AFC and the APNU have some difficulty with the AFC support um, advancing some budget cuts and the APNU perhaps taking a slightly different position? Well, I think, and and I mentioned the linden electricity rate mm. as an example. Well, I think you have to you have to contextualize the performance in Parliament. The performance of the APNU and AFC in Parliament is kind of symbolic of the AFC and the APNU's relation in the in the society. I find it unthinkable, Chris, inconceivable that we have had a regime for 12 years uh, of Mr. Jadio, where almost every aspect of moral, legal decency broke down. And the AFC and the uh, APNU have no working relation since November um, 2011. That have, that have to have some kind of feedback in Parliament. And what's the result? The result is that you say, the AFC um, voted for some things that APNU disagreed with in the 2012 budget. APNU found itself at office of the president without consulting the Linden people, supporting the electricity hike. Now we have the big fallout. AFC voting for two... Amila? Two, um, to Amila related. Amila related Amila bills. Related. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's because they're not talking to each other and they have no working relations. You know, to use a strong word, I think in the context of Guyana's authoritarianism, that's unforgivable. And you unforgivable to the AFC and the APNU. Yeah. Uh, um, the maybe I should ask. Maybe I should ask Michael to yeah. to to respond to that. Yeah. Freddie is saying I that it's unforgivable. Yeah, I basically think that from my point of view, as um, a very independent mind person, that we and APNU as a leading opposition of our country, need to have more dialogue, more discussions, um, to move things forward. I per that is my personally thinking. I, um, there's a lot, a lot of problems, but I think a lot of problems could be solved with simple dis discussion. It concerning the Linden Electricity um, hike, I was totally against it, because what I had discovered is although Region 10 Basically, the, the bauxite, you have gold, you have timber. They were actually bringing in more U.S. dollars in terms of foreign exchange than many other regions. So I, I, one of my things, if this, this community, if Region 10 is bringing in more in terms of foreign exchange for Guyana than what rice was bringing in at that time or what sugar was bringing in at that time, uh, we should have some subsidy going back to that particular well, you could region. justify the full subsidy 
that Lenin receives? Well, it's a subsidy that it's they were receiving. Uh, uh, per capita is a very, yeah. very high subsidy. Yeah, but it was a subsidy they were receiving, I think, uh, from since the British time. It was a long, That's correct. A long, uh, since Canadians. the British time. And you just, uh, when everybody um, living to a certain level, it's not easy to just take it away um, just like that. You need to face it out within a, a period of time. And the, uh, the good period of time is if that Region 10 have capacity to produce their own electricity. They have falls and different things. Did, did they, how did the AFC handle that matter? The, the electricity issue and the voting for the, sub, for the, um, of the decision on the subsidy? On um, the Linden subsidy? Yes. I think um, basically I was not directly involved. I was not part of, at that particular time on the management committee at, at, as president. Now, now I'm a part of the management committee. Basically, Kemraj and the others had that, dealt with that particular, um, the particular issue. I didn't go in depth with it. What I did was with some of the protests and so myself, Freddie, at the prime minister office and those type of things. Mr. Craig, um Mr. Kisun is saying that the, the fact that the AFC and the APNU have not collaborated in the 12th Parliament is unforgivable. And he blames both sides. Yeah, I, I think um, some blame must be apportioned on both sides. Um, I, I see the AFC as a party that's saying um, we want to prove to the nation to the world that we are independent and we are should not be treated as just a minor party we are a major party in in, in the play in in, in the game and uh, as such neither the pnc apnu or the ppp must treat us as just a fly-by-night little party and in trying to assert themselves um, they would rub APNU and the PPP the wrong way, and as such, um, they would find themselves in a position where um, collaboration would be a little more difficult, and as such, dialogue will, will break down. So um, it is not to, to, to apportion blame solely on the part of the AFC, but in trying to accomplish one thing, they have caused um, some harm in, in another area. What are some of your other comments about the 10th Parliament? Uh, high points, low points, disappointment, um, exuberance? Well, I think, it would, I think it would be semantically incorrect to just dismiss in totality the contents of the 10th Parliament. One of the graphic uh, um, things that stand out positively about the 10th Parliament is this relentless quest for information on the part of APNU and uh, yeah, AFC. Yeah, yeah. That look, you, you, you have to, um, we need this information. And what came out of that was Barajag Dio gave a number of radio licenses in a very incestuous way. Now, th those are positive things, and they've had spin off. That, in fact, was an AFC um, question mm -hmm. uh, from Cathy Hughes. Yeah, I think Cathy, yeah. Uh... Th they've had spin off, and the society is more conscious now of the depravities that go on with the 21 year old PPP government. But if you really take away that relentless quest for information, it would be a difficult to put. Uh, a, 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 an A or a B grade on the performance of both parties, and I think. Well, what what grade would you give, Professor? <laughs> um, I, 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 I I'm uncomfortable answering that, but I I, I certainly. Well, but I'm still asking. Right? I, I, I know, I know, and you're a persistent guy. I wouldn't want to give them. I would say barely pass. Barely pass. <laughs> Is that how you would normally um, do your assessment? It's two different contexts. <laughs> context. oh. What would you give them? And, and what would you give the AFC and what would you give the APNU? I would lump them together and talk about the 10th Parliament. And I would say the 10th Parliament did not meet the great expectation of December 2011. Mm. 
What about you? I, I, I'm not sure I'm in the business of issuing grades. But first we say still asking you. No, no, I, I was once um, a teacher and I Good, know well. how to give grades. Um, but uh, because I do not have my mark sheet with me, I would stay away from giving some grades. However, um, I would use one an example of, of one um, incident to show how um, a, 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 a manifest weakness in the opposition. And that has to do with the barriers in front of parliament. Um, the opposition brought a motion asking for the barriers to be removed. Um, an opposition speaker um, presides over the house and their own motion, they drive by those barriers every single time there is parliament without any thought that look, we had a motion. Similarly, and my argument was look, if you're gonna drive by these barriers every time there is parliament without worry, then why follow up uh, Mr. Rohi? Because it's your motion that tries to silence Mr. Rohi, but you pick up on one, but you're not following up on the other. And that kind of convenience, I think, um, should be um, shunned. And that kind of convenience, we should tell the AFC and the APNU that regardless of how small it seems, because I see the barriers as a barriers of um, barricades of dictatorship, I see them as, as barricades um, against freedom and things like that. I was going through some old photographs, some historical photographs, and I saw a photograph with um, um, Janet Jagan and a, and a group of women holding placards and walking on the pavement directly in front of parliament protesting during this um, tyrannic government that they refer to um, that Burnham um, run. But yet, this government of democracy is putting up, they, they're putting up barriers and tell you you can't even walk in the vicinity of parties. But as you say, the, the opposition parties have not pursued this issue and said, look, exactly. we, we are going there. Mm. You think you can give an objective assessment of the two opposition parties? Uh, the two opposition parties? Not much. What I'm saying, what I know for fact is that ASC basically did a lot of work in parliament. From all the media release, I mean, we were up there before the Amelia Falls um, problem in terms of parliamentary work. The FC was mostly a front to me and in terms of and with APNU. One of the things that worry me is that... And they had, they had a quarter of, of the number of, of, of um, APNU members of parliament, and I wonder if you took that, yeah. um, Mr. Kisun, into account in, in equating the APNU and the AFC at the yeah. same grid. AFC was doing well, very, very well. Um, the, the thing with, with Parliament who worried me is, was the procurement commission. Because I know fully well the Constitution say that the, the Public Accounts Committee will nominate these people to, the, um, to Parliament. And then Parliament will approve by a two-third majority. But if, uh, my argument was, I discussed it with comrades. If we put up, our, put up the names who we want for the Public Accounts um, Procurement Commission, yeah. we put up the names, PNC put up the names, and PP refused to put up the names, the, com the, the um, Public Accounts Committee have a duty to table the names which is submitted. Not the, the, the problem though, the problem though, Michael, you need two thirds in the National right, Assembly. Right, but let they vote, let, if they go there, listen to me, Ra. Uh, no, I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. because I, I wanted to raise this next point. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of issues, you've had legislation, you've had motions, and the, the president and the office of the attorney general have played some role, have frustrated the will of parliament. In your view, again, APNU, AFC, yeah. how have they performed outside of the National Assembly? Well. I live, I live outside of Parliament, <laughs> and I live outside of Parliament every yeah. day, and I don't see, um, uh, I may be wrong, the AFC and the APNU probably doing their work. Uh, they go into villages, they handle people, milk powder, etc. No, I'm talking about pursuing but their in agenda. Term, in terms of pursuing the agenda, I live outside the Parliament and I don't see it. I don't, I, 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 
they, they may get annoyed at this. But I live in this country, and I don't, I, for two years, this government... You've probably staged more pickets than the, than for, the two political parties for, combined. For two years, but I mean, Chris, you have the local government bills that should not really drive the exasperation into afternoon. Uh, AFC went and voted with the government to the change the local government commission from seven to eight. Gave the PPP that. The PPP in turn voted for the four bills and the bills are nowhere to be seen. There comes a point where you have to tell the Guyanese people, look, what should we do? Should we still sit in this place and take this kind of stalemate? What should they do? Um, I, I, I want to look at it a, a differently in the sense that um, my observation is that there is a little desire on, in, in both parties for, for, for grounds that the other seems to control. What, what I'm saying then is that in cases where APNU and AFC can work well together, they sometimes do not because APNU would, would say, okay, we, we can't let Nigel Hughes on our platform because he will take some of our black voters. Um, and that fear... Is that an exam Is that hypothetical or that happened? <laughs> politics. I, no, 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 I'm asking a straight I, question. I think that is playing out in the Guyanese politics right now. Yeah, yeah. No, but um, I'm asking... For example, for example... Did that example, happen? Uh, My question example, was... No, 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 please. <laughs> My question was, did that happen? Because there is, there is a story that, yes, it did happen at Linden. Yeah, well, well of course. We, we all know that it did happen at well, Linden. Well, why not um, say it did? Yeah. That would have been my example. Um, he's, now a, he's now a diplomat. <laughs> the teacher just now is a diplomat now. <laughs> diplomatic. Yeah. So, so the point I'm making is that when you have those kinds of things, it makes it hard for APNU to work together with AFC on many other issues. And for example, when the president well, the example you gave, gave, I thought it would be the other way, that the AFC would find it difficult mm. to work with APM. Well, right. Uh, for example, but, but there probably are, are there examples where the AFC, for political reasons, try to undermine the APNU. I, I can't think of any off the cuff, but the, the the point I was about to make is that, for example, whenever the president calls on Mr. Granger, for example to come and meet and let's talk budget or whatever. Um, the bond that should have existed between AFC and APNU, because it is not there, um, Mr. Granger will turn up at the office of the president and have a meeting, and then tomorrow, AFC will come out and say, oh, there is a secret meeting between Granger and um, President Ramatar, and what is going on? We, we didn't hear anything about it, because um, I, I think there's a fear in APNU that when if AFC is a part of some of these um, discussions, that the glory, so to speak, will have to be shared with the AFC. And because of the, the fast growth of the AFC, APNU fears that they, you know, their, their own support base can be lost. And as such, um, collaboration then becomes um, more, uh, 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 a more difficult proposition. Political work outside of Parliament. Yeah. To pursue the agenda set out in your, your your working document, your manifesto, and whatever else you set out to do in the National Assembly. I think um, I think we had failed in basically to a certain extent in two areas. Um, for me, if Parliament fail, if the government fail to put certain system in place like the procurement commission. Right? I mean, you cut me down a little just now, right, concerning Because one of the time I marked from Japan, I said, oh, if, if Greenwich, who is the head of the uh, Public Accounts Committee, that the committee is the have the duty to table the names to Parliament for Parliament to approve it by a two-third majority. Now, if that committee does not table the name, then the president can ha always say, oh, the I can't appoint this commission because this committee had never table this name. So one time... But uh, you, you see, you, you gone, uh, no, you've gone right back in Parliament. I'm yeah. asking you about work outside right, of the National Assembly. Outside of the Parliament, what I'm saying, I was planning to... And basically, we're going to take a break just now. Yeah, I was planning him to move to the court for that to happen. So outside of the Parliament, move to the court to have the Public Accounts Committee table the names which were submitted by the Alliance of Change and APNU. 
the other areas in terms of um, where, where certain failure is, the only thing you could use is protest. You have to use people's power. If the, if the parliament, if the courts fail, if the court taking five, six years to deal with the issue, then you need to exercise people's power. We'll get back to the courts. Um, we'll get back to the program. Um, for now, we'll take an outbreak, and perhaps it's timely that I should announce that come the end of this month, I will be discontinuing plain talk. Costs have risen beyond what I think um, might be I can justify. So I will try to offer viewers as good a program, good programs as we can to the rest of October, but at the end of October, plain talk will be off. We'll now take an ad break. to Plain Talk with Mr. Freddy Kassoon, Mr. Leonard Craig, and Mr. Michael Carrington, three persons, either members or associated with the Alliance for Change, and we're discussing um, political situation as we head towards um, the, another year into the 10th Parliament. You were on the floor um, yeah, about please. work outside of the National Assembly, mm -hmm. what the AFC could and should have done that might not have done. Um, we, to me, we we do we doing some work. Financial, we are a little financial. You know, every political party after election, sometimes you can be a little financial um, stress. But we are moving around. I, I particular going all over basically Guyana. You know, sensitizing people what taking place in Parliament and what taking place with the AFC and those type of thing. But what I wanted, I'd be very uh, frank with you, I wanted we to take a different position. I feel that when people, when the government is not listening whatsoever, we need to up start uh, approaching the court more, utilizing the court more, and I think we need to utilize protests, not in terms of march, but standing up in front of different ministries and deal with it. For instance, if the government, the president refusing to sign those bills, we deal with the president office in terms of whether it's 50 or 100 of us go there and we protest asking him to sign the bill. I'm very upset that 21 days already passed where the PPP had, signed, uh, had approved this four local government bill and then they turn back and refuse to sign the same bill. I feel um, basically they behave like real con people, the PPP, behave like real con people. I am actually glad you raised the point mm -hmm. about utilizing the courts more. Mm -hmm. um, if we look during the, and we're talking about out, what they have done outside of outside the, the National Assembly, yes. If we look inside of AFC, the three or four top leaders in the AFC are phenomenal um, lawyers. They are um, some um, Guyana's best. And I can't recall a single case that the AFC has taken to the courts. Um, we, we find the government um, taking cases to the courts every single day. And in APNU it's worse. APNU got more lawyers than, they, than uh, probably any other profession in, in, in parliament as a single profession. Mm -hmm. Yet, for example, APNU brought a case the other day and then uh, Mr. Williams turned up to court to say he is not prepared to start the case. And um, that is the kind of thing that is befalling the, the opposition outside of parliament. And we would find a carryover into parliament once they con continue like that. And um, in that case, I would be forced to, to walk with my mark sheet and, and I might very well issue an F, but um, I am not saying I, I the do. The term is about to begin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Kisun. Um, well, the, 
the society, I think the, the Guyanese people are no fools. Or one thing I've learned decades ago about the Guyanese people, they may not be able to speak the English we do. They may not have that analytical capacity, but these people know their politics. <laughs> and Chris, you go from the length and breadth of this country, people are disappointed in APNU and the AFC. What has but the AFC APNU, done, in, for example, for, for Region 6, which is where the, the real determinant of the last elections well, manifested itself? Exactly, and um, Charandas Passad, who is a very charismatic guy up there for the AFC, has been complaining about loneliness, about complaining about lack of interaction, complained to me that a meeting at Rosignal was called off. He would, you know, I know there is a lot of pressure in this country, Chris. This is one of the most un un enduring authoritarian polities in the world. And the people have to make a living, people have their families. But you took the job. You took the job mm. as a medical doctor, you have to see blood. You took the job as a lifeguard, you're going to see people splashing in water. You took the job, 33 of them, to, to represent the Guyanese people in Parliament. Parliament is proving to be a monster, then you have to do something. Um, concerning the, the lawyers, if there are four in AFC, I counted, Chris, nine lawyers that are either members or in the leadership of APNU. Yet the kind of things APNU allow in this society, take for example, the Bobby's Bridge. Why you can't take a speedboat and, uh, and ply the Bobby's Bridge? That should have been in court. But should not be something the AFC should have taken on? But given they're, that they're one that region six, yes, yes, sure, sure. They're one region six. Um, I, I have no um, I have no uh, defense of that. What can what, you, you say you're in the management committee. Yeah, Why right. hasn't the AFC taken on the Barbies Bridge? Which, which quite frankly, mm -hmm. it's, it's an abomination to the people of this country. Well, um, Chris, in terms of the financial structure, in terms of the cost, in terms of the fact that you cannot ride a bicycle, you cannot cross it, like you can the Demerara River. Um, Chris, I'm, I must say that I'm a Barbician from uh, New Amsterdam, Kanji. And uh, about, I think about, about six months ago or whatever, my, my, myself, Kisu, and all of us was in Burbies. And I was discussing that particular issue that we need to get up and get to deal with that Burbies. See, the first thing, the bridge was built at the wrong spot. It, uh, it totally, um, we were called, um, deny financial spin-off to New Amsterdam. The bridge was to build in Iteka, going across to, I think, somewhere um, in... I can't remember the exact place by Stanley Town going back that way, where people are able to pass through New Amsterdam, they go, they buy, they shop and all kinds. So you had economic spin-off. They build a bridge there to cut New Amsterdam completely off the map, of, of, of able to make the people there to make money. So you're saying it was build. a political... It was a political... Rather than a technical and a financial it, decision. It had nothing to do with finance or technical. The next thing they did, they removed the boat completely from going across. Bear in mind Amsterdam. that we're talking about what the AFC has not done, not yeah. what they... PBT yeah, done. yeah. What I'm talking about the, the situation there with all that problem in terms of um, um, what is called discriminating against New Amsterdam, the people of New Amsterdam completely because the people do not vote for you. Uh, we need to take a stronger stand for the people of New Amsterdam. I think personally, and the, we and need the, to the AP and you won New Amsterdam. Did yeah, you? yeah. yeah. I think personally, we need to find a way, look at the laws, and find a way and move to the court against these people. If the, we have speedboat running across the Demerara River, we should have speedboat running across the Burmese River. You have river. it running across Linden, Essie Crebo, and all Just of Just about every river. So if they, are, if they are refusing, I don't know if they are refusing to give license for speedboat to yeah. run across that river. But if they, they are, are refusing, well, well that is Well, we don't know they refuse until someone makes Somebody, an application. Um, we may, we, someone, we, we might have to ask someone who dealing with a speedboat to make an application, see if they're going to refuse. Them. Let's get... But Alliance of Change, I, I, I personally, within our party, will start pushing some serious direction. And I think we will, we will look at where we could use the court, we use the court. Where we could use protests, we use protests. Now, did the AFC become complacent and allow itself over the Samaila issue? Mm. To, to, it didn't sense the mood of the people mm. and the reaction of the people to the matters arising out of the vote, the, um, the role of Ms. Cathy Hughes, mm -hmm. 
who was associated with um, the project, yeah, the project, and Mr. Nigel Hughes, who was also mm -hmm. um, associated with the project. Did they get too complacent? And forget the very principles that they abandoned, that they had once embraced. No, I wouldn't say um, the the. Well, you you would have to give me examples of the complacency. Uh, I think one of the things that got lost there is that, uh, and unfortunately, it uh, has become the norm to say that the AFC voted for the Amaila Falls thing. There is no such project in Parliament called the Amaila <laughs> Falls project. They voted for two related bills that uh, has to do with Amaila Falls. The, um, nothing to do with the, with the site, a global project specifically. But, no, no, it's had but nothing to do the, with that. Of course, the, P, the, the government has been promoting it as that. But, but yes, let's go back to the, to the AFC's role. And you say the complacency, yeah? I meant, well, you know, you, you say that, look, we must have, we must take the high, we are a party of the high ground, we're not um, of a party of the past. So we, we don't get involved in um, our leadership mm -hmm. behave with it was a certain standard. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of carelessness I'm, I'm referring to. Um, I, I want to slightly disagree with um, uh, the position Freddie is taking. One, um, there is uh, severe complacency in my um, estimation, and I'm referring to it this way, that AFC has not done a good job. Complacency in the sense that after the vote, they have not done a good job to explain to the man in the street what is the meaning of the vote they have made in Parliament. Mm -hmm. And so the only voice they hear is the voice of the government. And they hear the voice of people who do not understand what the, the vote meant. And so people are running away with the wrong idea. And um, in that sense, I see complacency. Complacency because um, Kathy Hughes herself is um, responsible. That, that is the firm that she has to put information out there in a palatable way and on the, uh, in a way that everybody could understand. But yet, she is not using her own expertise to um, make sure that the public gets information um, in, in a nice package, the way people can digest it. And, and, and for that, I, I am saying they are super complacent. Um, Chris, the, the, there were no um, hydropower bill. We did not vote for the uh, hydropower bill. I think it's the, um, the, low, uh, the loan guarantee ceiling to keep moving the loan up. guarantee ceiling yeah, and the flora, environmental flora. protection and flora and fauna flora, fauna which was a 1950s i think uh, the act was yes. 1950s seven, seven or, seven, or seven, something yes. like that there were no hydropower bill come to the thing the ppp have it like if it is this big amelia amelia falls hydropower bill um is the problem but it was not like that we did not vote for, uh, for but but it's not only the ppp take Taron Kemraj, yeah. take Sister Ryan yeah. saying they've all said the the APNU, the, the AFC sold out on a minor. Right, but we did not vote for any bill with but a But these minor. are your own people. Right, because uh, one the problem, it is a related, basically, or it is if GPL fall along basically with their with the payments, if the project come um, come to life, and they fall along with like say twenty million dollars, then the government will have to pay that. Um, Twenty million dollars. How the government get it back from GPL? This is all the thing. So, one of the, one of the things that um, take place with the project, I would like to talk on my point of view. From day one, I go against him, against um, voting basically to him to carry up that ceiling. The reason why? Because so, no, we talk about the complacency. Yeah, I the don't want to get a long discussion. Because yeah, I want to raise I another we, issue in a minute. I don't think we. Um, I wouldn't say we really get. Um, to complacency, you know, in terms of the um, the project, what end up um, happening is that we had other um, related like bills that we really need to pass. We ha we need really need to get going, um, like the local government, all the local government bills to pass to have this election this year. Because by law, Parliament had postponed the local government election to the first day of December. This 
I want, I, I know you, they don't want me to. So we wanted to hold a local government election this year. So in politics, it's like we're taking place with Obama the present moment negotiation. We say, all right, y'all want... Obama said there are some things you don't negotiate on. Yeah, we know if, that. If local government elections are a democratic right of the people, why do you need to, to negotiate on a democratic we right? We are dealing with undemocratic people, and sometimes when you're dealing with them, you got to try all ways and means to have, to move ahead, to move forward. So one of the things that I will say it out was a mistake. I personally, because I go totally again, I didn't want us to actually vote for that thing. So one, uh, just one minute. So one of the things um, that I know are talking long, it sounds like I'm talking long, but I don't think we had the uh, complaints. What we do is we try to cut uh, basically a deal to have the local government election. Tell me something. Year. You're you're in the gay. You're no, in politics. Present, you're in, yeah. No, I don't mean management. You're in politics. Yeah. Do you think people like Freddie Kisoon, yeah. Christopher Ram, yeah. who might criticize the AFC yeah. for not doing more, understand some of the challenges a small party faces, financial and other resources? Do you think? Do you think we are too harsh? I don't think you're all too harsh, you know. I personally think you're all doing a, um, doing a very good job. Because when you all do that, it opens our eyes. Because sometimes not always you're able to see everything. But as um, Freddie might talk about something that you might be able to look at it, Chris might say something. So I, for me personally, you could criticize how much you want. I will take a look at your critics and then try to see if I could correct or if we could correct ourselves. Freddie, earlier you, you praised the political savvy of the Guyanese. Mm -hmm. Now, Nigel Hughes was a hero mm -hmm. leading up to the last elections. Mm -hmm. um, with his position, um, your own case, Nigel Hughes is a stalwart, a defender of human rights. He took a very prominent role at Linden. Yeah. Yet, the people seem to have being almost unforgiving to him in relation to them, his role in Amila, despite the fact that he apologized, he said, I'm sorry. Well, I don't think I can, ag I, 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 I can agree with you with the people have been unforgiving. I mean, you have to separate the people, the real salt of the earth in Guyana and the middle class media and we intellectuals and media people. I think the people of Guyana love Nigel Hughes. And I think Nigel Hughes, whatever little mistakes he may have made, mistakes, quote unquote. I think Nigel Hughes. He did, himself said he made mistakes, uh, so you uh, don't okay. need to. Um, <laughs> but I, I, was go, I was going beyond that, um, some of the accusations made. But I think Nigel Hughes departed significantly from the depraved political culture in this country when he said, look, I acknowledge it was a conflict of interest. I apologize. You don't see that coming at all. You've never seen that from the, the 50s onwards. What he has done, he has opened up a whole avenue of rethinking of, of our own individual culture. And I think that I, I think that was that was admirable, but that's the nature of the man. Yeah, I'm not going to ask him the question. He's part <laughs> of the management. Do you think the, the country uh, has been too harsh on Mr. Nigel Hughes? I, w when I think of the Nigel Hughes situation, um, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky comes to mind. <laughs> um, it is a politician that you <laughs> love very much, um, a, a, a politician you want to see do well, but you must acknowledge, and as he did himself, acknowledge that he made a mistake, and we, we, we can't put our heads in the sand to say that, okay, um, thing. But, but I think uh, the, the people of Guyana has um, accepted um, Mr. Hughes's apology. I, I think people are ready to move on and, and work with him. And um, he will continue to be a hero and a, and a stalwart to um, Guyanese politics and will continue to contribute very positively. Look where we are now. We have We've got so many matters that are the constitutional right of the people of this country of which they are being deprived. And we talked about um, procurement commission, local government election, constitutional reform, um, ombudsman. Are we a democratic country? Oh, no, I would have. Um, 
I would have insulted all my trainings at all the universities I've been to to say we are. No, certainly not. This is a protracted dictatorship uh, since Mr. Jack Deal took over. I would say we, uh, we have always been an authoritarian polity because that's what we inherited from um, uh, uh, colonialism. But under Mr. Hoyt, under is what we began to reclaim vast areas of freedom. And I don't think Chedi Jagan actually encroached on what uh, Mr. Hoyt gave us, though there were some there were some areas Jagan was closing off. You take a party man and make him chairman of the NIS, Mr. Hoyt would not have done that. But Mr. Jack Deal took us way beyond Burnham. And Mr. Ramatar in his two years have continued and have preserved that Jack the White uh, edifice. No, Chris, in, in, in the most unambiguous terms, I say no, Guyana is not a democratic country. How would you rate us as? I, I wouldn't be that severe. I would say we are a failing democracy and we still have um, democratic traits that can be salvaged. Um, it just takes some political Which maturity. ones? You have five years elections, what else? <laughs> um, the, the, the point I made earlier about the AFC, um, the role AFC plays in that we are people who still talk to each are other. You being allow, are you being consulted as Article 13 allows you to? Or 149C? <laughs> are you? Are you able to vote in local government elections as the Constitution guarantees you mm -hmm. that you've not been able to do since 1994? Can, yeah, you, well, can, well, you right. river? can you take a speedboat on the Barbies River? Can you take a speedboat on the Barbies River? That is why, um, that, that, river that, that is why I'm, I'm saying that I think we are failing um, society, but we still have some democratic traits that can be salvaged. That is what I'm saying. You worked in any foreign ministry before? No, in no, diplomacy? No, I've, I've not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, um, Chris, um, in terms, I would say Guyana don't have any democracy. I would say that clear because you can't say Guyana have democracy and within 43 years we only had two local government elections within 43 years and that is um, very 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 bad. Um, 19 years to the PNC, uh, for the PPP, so 19 years we have no local government election. 21 years to PPP. No, no, but the last, one was, was the last one was due in, we had 94, 97. the last one was 94, so the next one would be 1997. 97. That's correct. So, so 16 years actually it is postponed. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, bear in mind, your party voted for the postponement, yeah. the AFC. Yeah, I want to explain to you. What did the, most of the what time... What do you believe, Flip, please? Yeah. What they do most of the time, they allow the time for holding election to pass. And like the next year, the January, the February, they bring a bill to postpone the election. Are we going to see that again? It will happen again because GCOM can't hold election so, so this year. AFC is going to vote for postponement of elections I don't know again? what they will do. I don't, I, I, I don't know what the parliament will do, but the, the, the date for the postponement ends on the 1st of December. So if it's the 1st of December and GCOM is saying they can't really hold election this year, they mean they got to postpone for next year. So we have a postponement again coming from local government election, which should not be. GCOM should be ready for this year, the local government election should be held. What would you tell the AFC mm -hmm. as, as Parliament resumes in another week or so? What would you, what advice, what, what direction, what guidance, what mandate, if you could, offer the AFC? I would say to them that the in-house performance, parliamentary performance has done some credibility damage. It has dashed hopes of people, people who voted for them. And I would advise them that they have to tread carefully. Give me some specifics. So give the AFC some specifics. Mm -hmm. What should they do? What would you want to see them do? Inside uh, and outside of the uh, National Assembly. Well, I don't think they can do much inside of Parliament. I remember an AFC leader once said to me, Freddie, tell me how we can get them the government to sanction who he, what more can we do? And, and that person is right. I would more like Ta to give them advice table outside. Some bills, of, table some bills. Table some bills inside of parliament. Keep on asking questions. Have an episodic boycott now and then. But I, I, um, my forte is extra parliamentary struggle. I, I would more prefer oh. to advise them on that. Uh, for me, my advice to the AFC would be this one. Um, internally, they should get back in touch with the common people. They seem to be losing the touch a little. Um, rein in 
their supporters and members uh, find the level of talent that they have and see how they can exploit it um, every member that they have they should do a real talent search and see how they can exploit that um, that is one and two um, Guyana urgently needs a constitutional change and that should be on the front burner of the AFC and I dare say the APNU and we should accept nothing less in fact we shouldn't even be looking forward to another election. We should be asking because how can we guarantee that any party who wins the next election will not be as dictatorial as the present government? You've heard them, um, um, what they say they would, they would like to see the FC do. What, what's your comment? Yeah, concerning the... Um, what would you tell your parliamentarians yeah. or, or your management committee they I, should be doing? In terms of parliament, um, why need to uh, why need to see us to do is list all those constitutional breaches and the major problem by now are. they should have done that of yeah course. and list them and give the ppp basically a deadline to have um, basically all these commissions in, into place the local government bill sign and give them a deadline and if they fail in terms between now and january february to have these things in place i will ask them to ask up new to join with us for a no confident vote against this government. That's an Article 106 vote of no confidence. Yeah, I you suppose. Suppose, but I don't think that will take us any place. I, and I understand. It will, it will, it will force. The, it, it will bring the government to an end. Uh, yeah, but another election, which the government again can win a minority government, and then the same thing continues. And I am saying we should be hungry for polit for, for for constitutional change and. That is the deadline we should give. W would you support um, a 106 motion? I would not support uh, APNU AFC going into another general elections. Meaning then, to answer your question, if the no confidence vote will inevitably and legally push us into another elections, no, I think another elections is far. So what if the PPP danger. decides, look, I don't want to, I'm not going to have I'm not going to subscribe to any constitutional change. Anyway, yeah. where are we? At a dead end? Uh, then um, if, <laughs> if we get to the situation that America is in and start shutting down the government and the country so that we can get a better country at the end of it, um, sometimes a little bit of um, belly pain is necessary to tell us, yeah, go drink some medicine and, and, and purge yourself. I think viewers would want to know, um, we, we got two minutes, so okay. don't take long. Um, the, the defections, the crossing over, mm -hmm. we've had um, Dr. Asquith Rose and Mr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Taron Kemraj. Mm -hmm. How damaging is that? How significant is it? I, t I must say, though, it's, it's very sad to lose these guys, my friends, them, and those type of thing. And it did uh, bring some damage. Uh, but I come to realize in the FC, people come and go. Moses is with us. Bessessar is with us. They come over from the PPP. And we have other people. Kisun give us some backings. He's not an AFC man. So we have a lot of people. People basically come and go. And if uh, members come into the party and they may not like the way the leaders are somebody, they, then they will go. Sometimes they return. You're a political scientist, historian. Um, is it a little bit of, a, of history? I mean, when you think about it, Trotman, <laughs> Kemraj, Ramjatan, and Sheila Holder um, came out of other parties. Isn't no, other parties, yeah. But it, it, it's not the same. Um, those things happened in Guyana, and the people who defected had large uh, had influence in constituencies in Guyana. I think very few Guyanese know who Dr. Rose is, and uh, um, to uh, 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 a lesser extent, uh, they don't know who Dr. Rose is. Uh, Dr. Tyrone Kermaj was a columnist. But they're not grounded mm. in Guyanese practice, and therefore, after a few mornings, um, they just become. <laughs> 30 seconds each yeah. to wind up. 20 seconds. Um, basically, I would say, um, Chris, I'm, I'm very disappointed. I may mean, heard that you'll be off the air from this month. End. Forget me, man. No, no, no. We can't have you off the air. Somehow or the other, we got to find somewhere 
we got to talk to our viewers and so some of the other to keep you on the air. 20 seconds, let's <laughs> talk about the no, FC. Um, <laughs> what, what I would say is that um, Nigel Hughes should continue to be a uh, champion for the people. We cannot forget nor discount his contributions. And whatever problems he, he has now um, should find a way of organizing them so that he can continue to um, represent the people. Freddie, he left you with only 15 seconds. Uh, I, I know Kemma Jamjatan and Nigel use personally. They're fantastic human beings. And I think they will keep the AFC going. Operators and viewers, guests, <laughs> thank we'll you very going. much we'll for being on Plain Dog this evening. And I look forward to seeing you, viewers, again next week. Have a good week. <laughs>